Welcome to Sew and Code with the Adafruit Gemma Sequin Starter Pack. Here's the plan we're going to sew, code, and review a total of eight steps. First, we're going to need our supplies. Here I've got the Gemma board. Then I've got my LEDs pinned on a little guide over here. My needles are also here with the threader. I've got my conductive thread and my scissor over here. And I also have a piece of felt that I'll use to sew on this sample project. Now it's time to get sewing. Let's thread the needle. If you're doing the same circuit I am with just one LED, then you'll need about 10 to 12 inches of thread. I'm just gonna use my paper here to roughly measure it and snip it, and then put the thread away so it doesn't unravel somewhere I don't want it to. Then we can thread this needle. Using the threader is really easy. Just put it straight through the eye of the needle and then even a frayed thread will easily go through the threader. The threader itself might take a little bit of wiggling to get it back through the eye with that thread in it. But then once it's through, it's a little easier to tie off. We're going to tie a loop at one end of this. If you've been taught to fold it over and have a double line, that might work, but it's more likely to have short circuits because of that double line. This way is better, safer, to prevent short circuits. The loop by the eye of the needle is all about being able to easily cut it again later. So I've just tied it with a double knot, nice and easy, so it'll still go through my fabric. And that big wide loop will be easy to cut later. The other end just needs a knot, any kind of stopping knot, so that the end when I pull on it doesn't just come straight through the fabric. Here we go. It's time to complete the circuit. So here is the plan for this circuit. I am going to go out from output pin D1 to the positive side of my LED, and then from the negative side of my LED back to ground. But I'm going to do the sewing in reverse. I'm going to start with ground. That's usually a safe bet when working with electronics. Ground things out as needed, and then go with the positive power. So to get this started, I just pushed through the back of the project. That way the knot will be on the back and nice and tidy back there. And then I'm looping around that pin a couple of times to make sure it's nice and secure. After that, I can running stitch out to where the LED will go. Running is left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot. A running stitch is in and out, in and out. So however you need to go with pushing it through and back, is a good running stitch. Nice and tight for your final project would be better, but a loose stitch is fine for this practice. Now I'm gonna grab one of these LEDs. Anyone will do. LED stands for light emitting diode. A diode has direction. If we zoom in to look, we'll have an easier time seeing the positive and negative ends of that diode. So we need to get the negative end threaded on because the negatives should all connect to ground. So I've gone through the negative terminal of that diode. And then I am going to extend my stitch just a little bit farther in order to tie it off. To tie off a stitch, start sending it through and loop the thread around it. That gives it a nice knot. Oops, I snapped it. That's okay. Um, I was gonna cut it off anyway. <laughs> so now we can just retie for the next thread. This is a separate thread for the other part of the circuit. We want to force that current through the LED, which has a built-in resistor. So just tying off another stopping knot and then the same procedure again, sending it through the project from the back so that the knot is nice and tidy on the back. 
and again with doing the loop a couple of times to make sure it's nice and secure and has a good connection to the Gemma board. And again with the running stitch. Just taking a second to make sure it's all going to line up. And then sending it on through. I'm not doing this one quite as tight. This is just a practice after all. Then through the positive terminal. And I goofed on this when I did my knot on the front. That's okay, sometimes you're going to goof. That's why we did this practice one. Finally, the circuit is complete and I can snip off all of the excess thread. That loop on the end of my needle should make it easier to get that off of there. Secure my needle right away. You don't want sharp pokey things just hanging around. And there we go, excess threads. On the back there are some particularly long ones that could cause problems if they touched. So we'll snip those off and there we go. All that's left before we code is to clean up our sewing materials. Make sure all of your sharp objects are put away securely. Clear away all of the scraps of conductive thread or extra felt or fabric and then pause until you're ready to get going at your computer. If you haven't already, you'll need to install and configure Arduino IDE. Here's how it works. There are four major steps to installing and configuring. First, you must download and install the Arduino IDE from the arduino.cc website. Then we have to fetch the definitions for the Adafruit microcontrollers using the provided URL. Then we install those definitions from the board manager. And finally, configure the settings for the environment. If you go to the software page at the arduino.cc website, you'll see the download options for the different operating systems. Choose the correct one for your system and then install it just like you would any other application. Once you have it installed, you can open it just like any other application, however that works on your system. Now we need to fetch the definitions for the Adafruit microcontrollers. Under um, Preferences, now on Windows this will be under File, on Mac is under Arduino, but in Preferences there is a option for additional Boards Manager URLs. I've already got mine filled in, um, but you can grab that link from the video notes. It's just a JSON file that includes information about how to get the definitions. Press OK on that. Then finally, we need to install those definitions. This will be under the Tools menu. Under Board, there's Boards Manager. And it'll have this list. You're looking for Arduino SAMD boards. Um, sorry, Adafruit SAMD boards. They're both in there, so be sure you've got the right one. Here it is, Adafruit SMD boards. Um, oops, mine just jumped a little, but mine's already installed. So it has a remove. What you'll want to do is press the install button that should be right here. Okay. It might take a minute to actually install that, but once it's done, you can close out of the boards manager and go back to your tools. There are going to be a couple more settings here that we need to configure first under board. This list will have changed a little, and now we have an Adafruit dropdown with all of the Adafruit definitions that we just installed. We're looking for Gemma MO or M0. So that's the one we want selected for our board. Then back in the tools menu, you'll also want to choose a programmer. There are two options here. We want the Atmel ICE. And then also look under port. One port has to be selected no matter what, and you might not have any here until you plug in the USB for the Gemma board. So this is a place where you'll have to come back um, probably every time you launch the app to make sure you have a port selected. 
Now let's work with some code. All right. A typical first program when we're working with LEDs is to make those lights blink. So under File, there's an Examples submenu. The first one is Basics, and in there you'll find Blink. We'll open that one up. Now there's another sketch still open. I'm going to close that one. There we go. There's a whole bunch of comments on this file. All of this right here is information about this program. It's not the actual program code. The real program is down here and it is setting up the board with a pin mode of output for the built-in LED. We don't want to use the built-in LED on our Gemma board. We want to use the LED that we connected with our output pin when we sewed it in. I chose the output pin labeled D1. So I'm going to replace LED built-in with one. I'm going to also do that here and here. Now at this point, the program is suitably complete. I could load this on and test it, but I also want to take a minute to just think about what this thing is doing. The loop is going to um, execute over and over again. So that's what's going to initiate the blink in a repetitive way. There's a delay here of 1,000 milliseconds, so that's one second, in between turning the LED on and turning it back off again. And then another 1,000 milliseconds or one second before it turns it back on again. So you have some time on, some time off. And then again, time on, time off. But that's the whole program. That's the only thing you should have to change in this basic example for your first circuit, is make sure LED built in is changed to just the number one or whichever pin number you sewed um, for your output pin on your project. Now that the program is written, we can load it onto the board. Okay, so over here I have connected my USB to my computer and also to the micro USB port on the Gemma board. There's power to it already. If you connect yours and it doesn't provide power, the board itself might be off. There's a little switch right there. Just flip it back on and see if that works. Then we need to get this thing ready to accept a program. There's a tiny little button right by that very bright um, dot star LED and you have to double tap it. It's kind of a rhythmic double tap. It's not a straight tap tap. It's more like tap tap. So tap tap. And now I know I've done it right because I have a green light and a red light. And I even have um, a notice on my screen here that it has found the Gemma bootloader. Windows and Linux might look a little different, but here on my Mac, I've got the Gemma bootloader. So that's a good sign. Okay, I am now ready to upload the program. Here in Arduino IDE, there are a couple of buttons in the top of each file um, editor area. There's verify, which I could do to make sure my code compiles, but this was a very simple change. I'm not too worried about it. The next one over here, it looks like a little bit of an arrow pointing toward the right. And when I hover, it says upload here in the status bar. That's the one I want. I'm gonna press upload and then I wait. <laughs> I am going to increase the size of this um, debugging area down here so I can watch what's happening while it uploads. Ah, no device found. So that's what I was saying earlier in the configuration part where you might have to go to tools and look at your port. Yes, now that I have plugged it in, I actually have the Adafruit Gemma M0 as one of my ports available. Perfect. Try again. Upload. Now this looks like a lot of red text and might be very alarming, but that's okay. We've got verify successful right here in that last chunk. Um, so even though it's bright red, it, it's not errors, it's just um, information. So verify successful, that's what we're looking for. And our board should be giving our Blink program. And indeed there it is, blinking on and off with one second on and one second off over and over. 
Now that we have a completed project, let's review a bit. First up, think about what you did while you were sewing. Things like threading the needle and doing the running stitch, actually making connections to the pins, and of course the safety with the sharp objects and cleaning up after yourself too. These are important skills for sewing wearables. But also the circuitry side of it, at the same time, you want to avoid short circuits. You don't want to have wires crossing um, and causing short circuits. All output pins um, should be directing their current to the positive terminals of your LEDs. Diodes do have a direction. And then the negatives should go back to ground. If you are interested in doing a more complicated circuit, you might want to look at these ones. In the diagram on the left, you'll see it creates two rows of LEDs, so you can program them in two different ways. The top row is connected to D0, and the bottom row is connected to D2. These are also for analog output, which allows you to do interesting effects like fading. On the right-hand side, you'll see a slightly more complicated diagram that uses all three output pins. D0 goes to the center LED, and the other LEDs are split between the other two output pins. In both cases, it's important to note that all of the negative terminals of the LEDs are connected to ground. You can follow from the ground pin out to see how it is connected to all of the negative terminals. Finally, let's reflect a bit while we tear down. This is a great opportunity to think about what we've done and what we'll want to do next. So first up, one thing I've done is I've created a guide for my LEDs. I have just tested this one and confirmed that it's the white. So I'm going to put that back onto my guide where I want the white LED. Putting away your components in a way that will make them more useful for next time is an important part of the teardown process. So now that's on there. The Gemma board itself um, is already labeled, so I'm not um, concerned about that one. I think it's pretty obvious. So while I'm doing that, I might also think about what I'd want these things to do other than just blinking LEDs. There are a lot of other sample programs in the Arduino IDE, and maybe exploring those would be another good next step. All that's left here is the conductive thread and felt, which I'm just going to throw away. I don't want any of this conductive thread to be getting in the way and causing short circuits in any of my other projects. So there it is, all finished and ready for the next one.